Good luck. All right. So we'll continue playing the same opening thing, opening this diagonal, permitting the bishop exchange. Um maybe I have a change of heart today. Yeah, let's let's try to transpose into something perhaps a bit more interesting. Um Hmm. So many move order nuances that we don't know all the details of, but should know enough to get by. The main concern I have is that this third file might open, um, and I just need to be prepared for that. So that's why I have not committed the rook to the fourth file yet, is that maybe I'll want it on the third file instead. Or maybe I want to play opposing rook, just like the game we looked at a brief instant before the stream, or before this um, segment began. I have played some opposing rook games, and they are interesting when this king has not castled. Um, a lot of these ranging rook openings do transpose into each other. So let's play it this way. Okay, we'll take some time to move our king as well. They build a boat. We build uh, the half mino, mino, etc. So I'm waiting for them to decide which of these pawns they're moving, as if I have some separate plan prepared for each possibility. In previous games, I have anxiously pushed this third file pawn up, and it's led to disaster. So I'm having the common sense to this time not do that. Um... So yeah, pushing the center pawn would indicate that this silver is going to cross over. Pushing this pawn might indicate that silver is going to be used. Uh, let's see. So we're going to try to protect the bishop's head and see how that goes. And this might indicate a rapid attack by the silver. Uh, oh, also moving the silver might indicate a rapid attack. Um, all right. We'll defend our king from the side. All right, so... 
Is a bishop exchange terrible here? Is it unwarranted? It's probably unwarranted. There's no need for me to do something that hasty right now. Um, yeah, like, exchanging bishops would make it easier for their king to breathe. So, I don't need to do that. All right. Um mm. Now that there's silver well, dilemmas. Dilemmas make you a person think. Um, so if they move this silver, my silver could start attacking pieces as well. Making decisions is hard. All right, so... For dubious reasons, I did this. Um, I thought I'd be able to, like, do something tricky with bringing the bishop out and then back and exposing the rook exchange. Um, and somehow getting my bishop to this other diagonal. Um, it's probably not the best use of a tempo. So I'm thinking about moving my gold to 3-2 next to defend my rook. Um, unfortunately, on 3-2, it does block my rook. Also, yeah, I mean, blocking this rook from defending the third file looks pretty bad. Um, So if I do stuff like that, I'm asking for trouble. 
I'm just not sure if they're going to attack on this third file or not. That's what has me so confused. If they skip town on this file, I should start attacking on it right away, but um, but if they have a really well-timed attack on the third file, that might strike before my counterattack on the second file hits. Well, uh, that's interesting. I think I need to take this. In the previous game, I just let this pawn go, but... Um... If I break on the second file, what's going to happen? Silver takes pawn takes. They drop a pawn between my rook and my pawn, and I'm losing my pawn anyway. And I attack their silver. Huh. <sighs> um, if I push, they just bring the rook over, and it's too late. Well, no. If they bring the rook over, I push the center pawn. We exchange bishops, they take here, and I have time for a bishop drop. Somewhere. Um. Yeah, let's try this. Oh, they could bring the rook up instead of 
across. Um, not sure how much that changes things, but it is different. So yeah, what I'm trying to read out is if they chase my pawn with their rook, if I push and their silver escapes, I might have a pawn drop here and force their silver to retreat, and my knight's trapped. Um, hmm. Well, the silver can't retreat if there's a rook in the way. They'd have to make a bid for activity pushing their pawn. I take the silver, they promote, my rook runs. I don't have the bishop here anymore, so they just take my knight. Actually, I could go back. Their pawn would be pinned, and then they just push it forward, and my rook's trapped. Um, yes, so silver up, pawn drop. I'm sorry. No. Um, oh, I can't even do the pawn drop to try to win the silver in the first place. Because of Nifu. So I'm reading out all these variations that don't make any sense. Let's focus on variations that do make sense. Um, so yeah, bringing the rook to the open file is probably reasonable. I just don't know what's going to follow after they've taken a pawn and can place it basically anywhere. How am I supposed to respond to this? Well, if I could force pawns to exchange on this file, I could threaten a pawn drop right in front of their knight. Hmm. Okay, in for a penny, in for a pound. Um, they have no pawns. So do I have to push this and then drop my remaining pawn here and pray? No, that doesn't work. Um, so 
Yeah, I just need to do something aggressive at this point. Um, hmm. So if I retreat the bishop, they push this pawn. If I exchange pawn, they silver take. I can hit their rook. Wait, why is this pawn push so threatening? I have it covered three times. I'm panicking. I don't need to panic right now. Um, I need to identify their threat and neutralize it. Right now they're just focusing on neutralizing my threat. Um, hmm. All right. Well, while you play a defensive move, I'll play a defensive move. We'll see where we end up. All right, the rook's going to move. So I've kind of trapped my rook. I expect the rook to move upward, trapping their silver. All right. This is not what I expected. Okay, I guess we will trap their silver. I'm oh, sorry, at least from this side, it cannot go back to the right. But also, if we exchange bishops, my knight will attack this pawn. That said, knights are not nimble creatures. And this knight could readily, or very quickly, find itself in trouble. Um, but also having a bishop's exchange could be useful um, if I could find a good place to drop the bishop and threaten to promote it. Which I might not be able to do. If I had a silver, I could drop the silver to fork the king and the gold, or the rook and the gold. Um, and they would capture back with this gold. I would weaken their castle a bit.
So I expect bishop takes bishop. Um, if only because my threat of bishop takes bishop is pretty strong, and I'm not sure if they're going to be willing to confine their bishop. Maybe they're willing to confine it, and we get an interesting and really rich and complex position. Um, that would be interesting to play. I don't know how to play against that. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, so their bishop could spring to life at any moment, which is alarming. If they do, rook takes pawn. I, well, I don't have a pawn drop. I wish I did. That'd be nice. Um, well, that's actually really good. It's a good move. Um, Yeah, my confining my rook is not working so well. Taking the open file could be worth some material, but I don't know how much it's worth. What if I push pawn 5-5? Five five? Just make this really exciting. They take my pawn, I take here. Um, if they do rook takes, I could drop another pawn here. If they do rook takes, I'm... Uh, I still don't have threats on this file. Um, interesting. Pawn up, pawn takes, bishop takes, silver takes, rook takes, um, down the tempo. Pawn takes, pawn takes... Um, hmm. This is tricky. Push the edge pawn if they take here. I'd move my knight. They do move their knight. Yeah, I think I have to do this. I don't think any of the other tactics work out for me. Um...
So I pawn drop here. How do I take in the center? If I take, if Rook takes, I've got... There's one promotion I don't have covered. Um, but I can cover it. Yeah, I think taking the center, activating my bishop's the way to go. It's spooky, but I think this looks reasonable and against quite a few things I just pawn drop here. I'm sorry, I guess Rook takes, I can drop the pawn here. And their silver moves away, and then my bishop climbs out, and I start digging myself out of this hole. And if they do this, my bishop just goes to 5-5 five five directly. Um, which I assumed would just had to be very good. I like that my bishop is active. The rest of this position is pretty weird, but... Um, I do have an active bishop, and I'm trying to figure out how best to activate my silver, and perhaps putting it in my hand is the best way to activate it. And then if I could move my gold, I could get the rook into the center file. Or fourth file. Although fourth file they did this pawn push. Alright, so I capture the silver. It's difficult trying to find every possible tactic here. <sighs> but the spirit of what I want to do is move my gold and free my rook. Okay, so this is only defended by the Rook. I'm confused.
I feel as if... Did I miss something here? I tried to find it, but um, I think what I'm being asked to do is exchange my bishop for a rook. Or exchange my silver for a silver under these terms, but... Yeah, so they get the bishop. They have a bishop on an open diagonal, and that's scary. Um, Since this bishop, uh, since the silver is in no man's land anyway, um, promoting it's not the most valuable thing. It could be useful to promote, but it could be useful as is too. I'm afraid of being overrun on this side of the board. I think this is the correct square for this rook. The idea is that I want to exchange my silver for the knight, drop the knight here, and remove the defense of the scold. Um, or maybe just sack for the gold directly. Interesting. They're going to have a lot of attacking moves coming up here. I feel like I've given up a move by doing that. Um... Maybe I have. Something about this is just, yeah, escalating. So I'm going to bring my rook forward and start attacking stuff. I 
I didn't think any of these earlier combinations like pushing the center pawn or silver takes knight were fast enough. Even taking a lance seems slow. But if they drop a knight to hit the rook, uh, rook 5-5, five five, they might move the knight to discover an attack. I move the rook over. Oh, that's no good, is it? Um, hmm. All right. Now I think is the right time for this. I'm not completely sure. Again, taking the knight could have been interesting. Here we go. Let's attack. So this is my idea. Next, I can drop some silvers near the king and get the one space gap dragon. Um, I just need to be very careful not to fall into the traditional bishop knight. The thing that always mates the Mino castle. Because I've fallen for that quite a few times, and it'd be nice if I didn't fall for it again today. Right. So how do I respond to this? I'm curious as always. My curiosity's not going to reward me, is it? I didn't want to commit my silver up here, since I thought they could move their horse back and my silver would be in a bad space up here. I'm somewhat, somehow more okay with horse takes 6-4 uh, and me dropping a silver, hitting this with tempo, also defending there. 
Even though there's a tactical shot, bishop takes gold. Uh, I think it works out. Okay. Interesting. Um, well, we'll continue with my plan here. I've forked both golds. Um, that's where I wanted to put the silver anyway. It feels like we both played a defensive move, but I think my defensive move worked out better. Uh, actually, uh, I neglected one very strong resource on their part. Um, which makes this more confusing. Are they going to find it? Yeah, I think dropping a general back on 5-9 here would have made this defense a lot harder. Um, I'm giving up my last defensive resource here. Which is probably not very smart. Although, no, I get a gold. What am I talking about? I'm giving up my last one, but getting a new one. So... It's not death just yet, um, but that's much too risky. I should have spent more time on that. It was a dumb move, but also a very risky one. Um, it felt good in the heat of the moment, but there are so many regrets. I've pushed the king further away, um, and that's going to cost me a lot. Mm-hmm. Well, my opponent has a shot. Bishop takes gold that they've been preparing. Um, so if I drop a gold here, this allows the shot. If I drop it up here, I don't know. So possibly this bishop takes gold for very many turns in a row might have knocked me out. I'm not sure if it does anymore. Probably, but I don't know. Then again, I've been pessimistic about my recent games. Um, yeah, that's a beautiful move. Doubly so if it works.
30秒40秒Thankfully, I can pawn drop to block a rook check. Um, not sure how helpful that's going to be, but might save my butt. Um, How close to my king do I drop this pawn? Dropping it further is not going to make this any easier, is it? Uh, dropping it here is useful because my bishop can protect it. So even if somehow they remove my silver back here, um, I could drop a bishop to protect this pawn. But I basically need to mate pretty soon. Okay, what? What is this? Scary. I don't see a mate after this. So I'm still angling for bishop uh, seven nine check. Still trying to read that out. Oh, hang on. I've got rook seven nine check. Which does not mate. Well, maybe it mates. Rook seven nine, king runs. That's oh, mate. It's a pretty straightforward mate. Check. Um. Well, I'm sorry. No, it's not. Ah. <sighs> Thirty 
I'm just not seeing it. Mm -hmm. If I exchange bishops here. And drop the bishop again. I'll check at the rook. Somehow I'm complicating this. I must have missed an easier solution. I'm just thankful my opponent does not have a myriad of um, uh, diagonal moving pieces. Myriad's not the right word. But, um, yeah, I'm just glad they don't have lots and lots and lots of diagonal moving pieces, or this could get really scary. Myriad tends to refer more to concepts rather than countable things. Um, trying to think, there's another M word that's good for a lot of things. I mean, the, also the word horde comes to mind, but... Um, There's some battle combat related term that represents lots and lots of things.
multitude. Yeah. So I'm protecting this piece, which is otherwise undefended. Good game. All right, so this is a teaching ladder game. You know what that means? We're gonna learn us something this game. Uh, Ah. <laughs> but yeah, we were in Bioyomi for a lot of well, it felt like a lot of moves. Um hmm. Okay. Um Yeah, this got sharp. Um, wait, am I mated? Um, I mean, that's tempting too. I don't even know if I have to do that. Uh, so I'm greedy. Can I get... Oh, yeah. Okay. We can back up further, because there's a lot to review, but... Um... Yeah. So... Oh, God. <laughs> uh, wait. No, this is a variation. Yeah, I'm like, th this did not happen in the game. <laughs> If I had missed that in the game, I would be a little surprised at this point. Um, yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, but maybe it's not enough. Uh... Uh, yeah, you have a good point. Huh. Jeez. Well? That's, yeah. I kind of get deserve this for dealing in generalities so much. Um... Uh, yeah. You didn't think this is as good. Well, I mean, you have to defend your king, no? I took some time to defend mine. Um, alright. Missing chat comments. Lots of comments, but this game's flying by. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, this exchange of rook for silver or bishop might have worked well. You, this might have been a really good idea on your part. I just, uh, yeah, I'd expected something more like this, and this just gets complicated. Uh, what was I planning here? Uh, uh -huh. I had some vague notion of trying to unwind my pieces, but I'm not sure I had this figured out. 
Um, yeah, so we have this. Um, Yeah, well, you're playing Boat Castle, so I guess this is a teaching ladder. It's an opportunity to learn. Um, yeah, if this were like Tourney to Master or something, I would say if playing with an exposed king is a problem, pick a different castle. But since we're doing a teaching ladder, the goal is to learn how to do this stuff more effectively. Um, it's hard. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where I go next here. This, this position's complicated. I was thinking a lot of things, but didn't have this worked out. Yeah. Spend a move or two to... Well, yeah, where would I even recommend doing that? I mean, after I'd promoted my rook and had control of the back rank, giving up the entire back rank hurt you a lot. I've been there, I've given it up before, and it's... If that's the foundation of the castle, either the king has to run, or you need to defend the back rank a little bit. Um... But I'm not sure. Um. Yeah. yeah, I liked your position here. You have a nice position. And I liked your initiative you got out of this, even though... Okay, yeah. Yeah, I didn't think you'd seen this. Your initiative's nice, but... Yeah, I think at this point... Um, you had some... Your position was better before this exchange. And now it's just complicated. Which might be good, but... Um, oh, oh, that reminds me, this guy here, uh, this, this might have been slow. Yeah, like, any other piece to hit my rook might have been faster. Uh, although this bishop does eventually threaten to sack for the gold behind it. Um, uh, I need a, oh, right, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so we get this variation that could have happened in the game. And just taking... Maybe you're right. I was so excited about getting my dragon that I kind of lost count of everything else. Which is surprising for a chess player to just to give away all this material. <laughs> Definitely not my style. Um, but I guess that's what I did, not even realizing it. Um, yeah, this. Uh, since I don't have a gold yet... Um, so here I was... Oh, right. Yeah, that's that's the crux of the matter, isn't it? Okay, what do I do? Um, yeah, maybe you're right. I am notoriously bad at this sort of position. Um... Oh, that's right. That's what I was trying to think about during the game. You have only one knight that can go there. 
Um, Yes, this transposes. Do I have any tricky things? No, not really. Yes, yeah, so this just leads to the same your king successfully running variation, unless I take a lance or something, but that just gives up my attack. Uh, yeah, I think we'd have to go here. Right. Oh! <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, going back would be scary. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm sorry. There's a more direct move. It could just, like, throw the pawn over here. Yeah, so you have to take. But, like, as you say, your chances, as far as running goes, are extremely good here, because, um, yeah, I'm just down a bishop. And a lot of my pieces are not ideally placed. So, yeah. In my mind, I was alternating between this bishop drop, or this silver drop, and that silver drop. And there's just so much to read. Um, they both look interesting for different reasons. But, um, oh, well, is there time for this? I guess there must be, because I don't have a mate. Wow, okay, that hurts. Um, yeah, this is the stuff. Right, and I was looking at this during the game. This is about as far as I got. I didn't see a way that I could mate. Um... But okay. Uh what was what were we looking at here? Oh, sorry. Um Yeah, so I think my attack runs out and I think I get mated. I could be wrong. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't even have follow selected. My mistake. Not sure how I desynced. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, I just did a lot of strange things toward the end here. Oh, I too have had this history of, like, using my heaviest piece to attack first. Um, and, yeah, you will need the rook. I'm just not sure whether it belongs on the second or first rank. Although, the second rank is... It looks like a very good place for it. Um, here, I absolutely, it was, made sense for me to put the rook on this open rank on the back. Um, like... Although, you could have opposed it by putting a pawn here, and I would have had to move this. Um, so maybe this didn't make so much sense. It felt right, but I don't know. Sorry, I am trying to be helpful, I'm just not...
啊。And then the gold, yeah. Oh, the silver, maybe the silver drop instead? Hmm. Um, yeah, what was I thinking about here? Oh, okay, right, in light of that variation. Um, okay, yeah, that might be forced. It's either that or something like this. But taking the horse, I like it, but I've been misreading a lot of things here, so I don't know if me liking something is uh, a good sign or a bad sign. Um, Let's see. Ah, Schwartz is saying that my or that some silver drop is a mistake. <sighs> yeah, during the game I was trying to read out what happens if I just sack to take the gold instead of doing this fork. Um Oh, the back rank silver drop, forking the king in gold. Yeah. So when I did, uh, like this thing. Yeah, I've. I have no doubt that Schwartz is correct. Um,. Yeah, in fact, that silver drop is why I'm basically down a silver in my attack. If I just brought my promoted silver uh, to take instead, that would have been fine. Or better. Let me put this on the big board. Maybe this will help everyone. But I, at this point, I think my attack is somewhat faster. Um... So... I, I'm not sure how to evaluate this. Like, before this in the game, I'd been pessimistic, and here, I thought I had some pretty serious chances. Um, well, that's interesting. Well, I just take here, right? Maybe not.
after playing this. My concern is the drop on 7-2, but um, I don't know. Uh, so my cons- wait, what is my concern? Can I count how many golds there are? <laughs> I thought there were two golds in the pocket, or in the hand. Um, hmm. What a strange position. Okay, so my big idea... Oh, well... Okay... I mean, this was my big idea, but, um, not sure that it, well, it's complicated. Yeah, so originally I was just going to take this, but that doesn't look so smart. Um... It feels like there was a mate here somewhere. Wait. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's my turn. Um... Oh, I guess, yeah, that actually protects your king from the front quite nicely. Um, hmm. I might have this. Gold seven two silver takes gold takes silver six three or eight three. All right, no, I can't read. Gold seven two silver takes gold takes. Um, silver six three. Rook eight two. Oh, keeping the rook in hand until that moment. Yeah, I'm misreading a lot of things, but oh, okay. Um, yeah, at this. After bishop 5-5 five, five here, I think I'm actually holding this position, so you have to find a different way in. Um, so Schwartz is making a recommendation uh, at some point in this move list. I think preceding the rook drop or something. I mean, surely I must be surviving here? Let's see. We have a comment. What's our comment? Uh, so the rook drop 
Gold 7-2 right away. Yep, this is what I was scared about. Um, so Jack Skull takes, oh, King takes is implied, Silver 6-3, and then the Rook dropped to 5, okay, yeah, I see. So that kind of negates the idea of this Pawn drop, because the Gold drop is so strong. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I think I'm busted here then. Or at least I can't do silver takes, and I have to just give up the silver, but, um, Uh, <laughs> again, that falls to bishop 5-5, five, five. yeah, um, yeah, so, yeah, no, this silver, or this gold drop was the thing we were looking at, and then I have to try, oh, okay, yeah, if I take that, I'm pretty sure I'm dead, um, not completely sure, but pretty sure. Um, because we were saying this check, and if this capture, um, Rook drops somewhere, well, even this, um, why did I think this worked? I must be misrepresenting something. I don't know. Um, hmm. uh, I thought this would be crushing. Maybe I put the rook on the wrong square. Maybe it has to go back here instead. No. All right. I messed something up. I gave away one too many pieces here somehow. But the pawn drop... Oh! What? Uh, I'm confused. With this pawn drop, they're safe. Oh, we're saying um, if there's a pawn drop earlier in this line, like some kind of pawn drop here. This pawn on 6-2 is somehow holding the castle together. But without that, like, the castle just gets overwhelmed with the silver drop. But the year of the silver drop isn't as effective. Okay, so you can't just... Yeah, the 6-2 pawn drop changes this. I see. Okay. Sorry, I'm catching up with what you all found out minutes ago. I think now I understand 6-2 pawn drop is necessary. And somehow I thought this just made it anyway, and it's not... That's not made. There's probably still something, but... Um, there's probably still some mate, but the gold sack... I see. Um... Oh, okay. Well, if I take... If my silver takes the gold, yeah, I'm in Sume. Yeah. So I cannot just take the gold like I did in the game. Um, 
Or maybe somehow it worked out in the game. I don't know. Let's put this on the big board for all the spectators. Follow the... Oh, sorry. I got desynced again. Sorry about that. But we've caught up. Um, yeah. Again, I'm working on more elementary sume than this um, in my free time. My oh-so-copious free time. <laughs> um, but it's interesting to see these things in action. I just wish I were better at trying to explain some of this. Um, like, I find ways to make positions complicated, and then I just rely on some assumption that, well, because it's complicated, somehow in Bioyomi I'll just outplay my opponent. Um, it would help if I could read things as accurately as possible. Um. But yeah, we had a pretty wild end game. Um, yeah, if my king moves here. Like, if I saw during the game how any of this would have made it, I probably would have picked some other variation. So I'm at a bit of a loss here. Um, maybe the silver drop on 7-1. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure that it's right. But, I mean, if it's not right, what else could possibly be right here? Um... That said, I didn't believe in the bishop sack in the first place, but um, I tend not to believe in a lot of things, so you have to take that with a grain of salt. Yeah, I earlier made a really good point about just taking the abundant material I had been offering, but yeah, I'm not so sure this bishop... Well, we could put this into an engine. The engine could figure it out one way or the other. I'm just not seeing a lot of ideas because my gold is occupying 7-4. So you'd need some combination of diagonal moving pieces and orthogonally moving pieces to pull up off a mate. Uh, wow. Wow. Oh, uh, jeez. Okay. Uh, yeah. There we go. Wow. So this pawn drop changes a lot of the variations. It's kind of amazing that I have time for a pawn drop there. Uh, oh. So I had been... Uh, Ship drop is feels wrong, but this is what I've been thinking about. It might be too heavy, but um, can this work? You don't have a gold. So 
so... Oh, well, okay, yeah, I have to place something like this here. Yeah. Oh! Oh, that's a nice sack. Um, although, I might have a mate there. Wait, no, I only get a silver, not a gold. Yeah, wait, is this not mate? Maybe it's not? Yeah. Let's not check. Yeah, I think once you start sacking, if I get enough generals in hand, I think you have to have a mate. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, having Sume knowledge can improve a lot of things. Um, so that's a very, very astute observation by whoever suggested Pawn 6-2, uh, which strengthens this defense quite a bit. Um, oh. Oh. <laughs> That's cute. But yeah, I think overall your advice about um, in certain situations being able to take pieces and escape with your king would have been a good thing. Um, yeah, I'm just really struggling to see how the bishop sack could have mated me um, it, with this pawn 6-2. Um... Maybe there's a way to stop. Well, I don't know. Yeah, it's a complicated game. Wait, now that I'm thinking aloud, um, yeah, perhaps because the pawn 6-2 drop is so effective, possibly the promoted bishop takes 6-4 might have been just a blunder, and just invert the move order, put the rook down first or something, unless I have a mate, which I didn't see during the game. Um... I know I did delay quite a bit before putting my gold down on 7-4, but like on that turn it took me a while to come up with gold 7-4, but uh, yeah, I might instead of like, uh, oh, okay, interesting, um, 
I forgot that's possible. All right, but still, there's got to be some way to deal with this, right? Yeah, I mean, this looks very difficult for me to do anything. Um, maybe I do have something I just was completely blind to it during the game, but it looks like you have a very strong attack, and I am I need more pieces closer to your king for me to be able to do anything. Um, that's... Yeah, more or less what I was thinking. So to me, this just seemed very unclear. Yeah. Or rather, that if there is any way for me to save it, that would be very hard. There might be something, but yeah, I prefer your side of this. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I see. Yeah, knowing your fundamental sume is very powerful. Um. I wonder. This is fun. Yeah, that's close. Um. Oh, I see. Uh. <laughs> yeah, the five-two pawn drop is very resourceful too. I'm surprised just how difficult it is to checkmate a king in this game. In chess, it's so much easier. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. This might not be working. How far back do I have to go to get something interesting? Um... Huh, maybe my attack actually has some merit. Wow, maybe I've been sending us in a wild goose chase here, just... I mean... Yeah, it's just that, like, maybe the promoted bishop taking on 6-4 might have been a blunder, but also, like, sacking the bishop early seems... Well, it prevents the pawn 5-2 drop idea, which would prevent the bishop sack. Um, so, yeah. I'm not an engine. I'm not sure why I'm pretending to be one. That's it's just a really complicated endgame. Uh, uh, 
Yeah, the end game is just like crazy. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, thanks for my opponent for and all our spectators for trying to help with this analysis. It's just really I need to continue working on my sume. I am working on it. I'm just slow. Um we can still have interesting games. But yeah, you're absolutely right that this fork was uncalled for. This made sense. Other stuff probably also made sense here, but I was just hallucinating a lot. So, um, so we got an exciting endgame because of the way things played out. Where suddenly I have this promoted silver and we've got this wide open diagonal. And I found a good pawn drop, and things got complicated. So, yeah, thanks uh, to everybody who enjoyed this. Um, yeah. And thanks to GLGR for running the teaching ladder, picking the pairings, helping us schedule with our opponents, etc. So, it's been nice. Um, all right. Um, I guess following this, I'll have to take a closer... Well, do I have to? I've been looking at games by stronger players for a bit. So that's where we got... Where we stole this uh, pawn 9-4 early opening idea. Trying to see what our opponent's committing to. And eventually they did commit here. Um, but yeah. There's just a lot of ways to play this. And at some point I should go back and look again at uh, Shogi Harbor's lessons with regard to fourth file rook. Um, I wasn't feeling confident in that today, but I would like to try playing that again sometime. Not just yet, but yeah. <laughs> Since I've reviewed the endgame, I might want to see how Senta got an advantage here. Yeah. That was interesting. Um, I mean, we've seen very similar positions before. And this gold move might have been too heavy. In other games, I think it's been suggested that I play this. Um... Uh, although here, I don't think that works so well. Um, so, yeah, I need to take a closer look at some of this. Um, I'll put this game through an engine. Uh, we've been analyzing it quite a bit. It is getting kind of late. Um... But yeah, I am curious what all the tactical opportunities were throughout the game. Um, as, because we closed this diagonal, both of us closed it, it got to be a bit of a, um, I don't know, a longer fight. Something that's not just some crazy fast melee. Although we got there. Um... So yeah, there's plenty of material to review here. Yeah, thanks uh, to everyone for the game and for the analysis. And have a good night.